Now, why is the center so important? One reason is mobility. For most chess pieces, the closer they are to the center, the more squares they can move to, the more squares they influence, the more squares they guard. Like this white knight you see here on a central square. It can move to eight squares. It influences, it guards all eight of these squares that are colored in yellow from a central square. But plop that same knight down in a corner, and look what happens. It's like breaking one of the horse's legs. It only has two squares it can go to from a corner square. Only two squares it can move to, only two squares it influences, only two squares it controls, instead of the eight squares that it controls when it's sitting on a central square. The exact same idea applies to the bishops. From a central square, any of these four central squares, a bishop controls 13 squares on the chessboard. As you see here, indicated by the colored arrows and the colored squares. However, from a corner square or from a board edge square, a flank square, a bishop only controls seven squares instead of 13. The same thing, by the way, applies to the queen, because the queen also operates on the diagonals. The queen is much more effective in the center than on a board edge. Curiously, there is one exception to the rule of central mobility, and that's the rook. A rook always controls 14 squares, exactly 14 squares, no matter where it is placed on a chessboard.